St. Thomas Aquinas, the angelic doctor, states that all of us are called to experience joy. St. Paul says, rejoice in the Lord, I say it again, rejoice in the Lord. Why is it that we experience so many people in families, in companies, in the society as a whole that are not experiencing the joy that all are supposed to experience? And the reason is very clear is that they are looking for joy where joy cannot be found. I once heard a story of a Baptist minister that was preaching very forcefully against drinking. And he said, if I had all the beer in the world, I'd throw it in the river. And he said, if I had all the whiskey in the world, I would throw it in the river. If I had all the vodka in the world, I would throw it in the river. He sat down and the choir master said for our closing song, let us sing, let us go to the river joyfully. We're not going to experience joy in the river of drink. It's a false joy. So in this segment, I'd like to talk to, about, to you about how we can go from sadness and depression and discouragement to an overflowing joy. And it's a story of two men who started a journey downtrodden, discouraged, in desolation. They ended their journey overflowing with joy. And this you can find in your Bible in Luke chapter 24. And it's a story of two men, two disciples, who are taking a long trip. They're walking about seven miles. They were heading out of the city of Jerusalem and heading toward a city with the name Emmaus. As they started walking and talking among, them, among themselves, they were experiencing a lot, of, a lot of desolation, sadness, discouragement, confusion, St. Ignatius calls this a state of desolation of soul. They were talking among themselves, basically debating, arguing over what had happened to Jesus Christ just a couple of days earlier. They couldn't make head or tails out of what had happened to him. They thought that he would be their savior and redeemer, but he was dead. Some had reported that he'd risen from the dead, but they didn't believe it. They were very cynical, very skeptical. But what happened was an experience that would radically change their lives. Apparently out of nowhere, this man comes and starts to walk with them. He walks with them, this stranger, this anonymous person. He walks with them side by side. He starts to engage in conversation with them. They're talking and arguing among themselves, and he stops them and says, so what are you talking about? And they say, are you the only individual in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about Jesus of Nazareth? And they said, and he said, what things? Then they started to talk about what had happened to Jesus, how he had died. And this foreigner, this pilgrim, who they did not recognize, listened to them very attentively. He was the best listener that they had ever met in their lives. These two men had talked to people who had listened to them, but never on the face of the earth had they ever encountered a man who was capable of such attentive listening to them. So they opened up their wounded, sorrowful, depressed, confused hearts, and they started to unload all their problems to this man. 
and he listened. And they opened up even more. And he listened. Very interesting as he listened. As they started, they were under a, an enormous, dense cloud of desolation. But the more that this man listened to them with their problems, it's almost as if the light broke through the clouds. The clouds dissipated. The sun was now shining in their lives. Their lives now, indeed, had true meaning. Because this man was listening to them attentively. He was understanding them, and even more so, they knew this, that, this, that this man really loved them with a sincere heart. Now, after they had finished opening up and unloading to this attentive stranger, now it was the time for him to speak. And he opened up his mouth and he, he began to speak. Not only was this man the best of listeners, but he was the best of speakers. And he started to speak about God. He started to speak about the Old Testament passages. He started to speak about how these Old Testament passages had actually referred to Jesus of Nazareth. They had never met anyone with so much humility, knowledge, comprehension of the Word of God, but also a man who obviously had great love. They really felt that this man was anointed, anointed by the Holy Spirit. So now they are the most attentive listeners. And all these clouds of depression and confusion that had just totally absorbed their whole lives after the death of Jesus were dissipating like the dew on the summer ground. Finally, they arrive at their destination. And it looks as if this man is heading on to a further destination. They enjoyed his company so much that they wanted to be with him. They didn't want to separate themselves from him. They wanted him to listen to them. And he, they wanted to listen to him. So as if, as he, as if he's heading on to a further destination, they open up their hearts and say, stay with us because the sun is going down. This stranger is very docile. He's very humble. He actually accepts their invitation. They've arrived at the little house. Imagine a little cottage in the town of Emmaus, about seven miles from the city of Jerusalem. They enter into this little house, this little cottage, and they invite this stranger. And they sit down at a table. Imagine the table, somewhat dusty, three chairs, somewhat dusty also. They sit down at the table, and something extraordinary happens. They had a little bit of bread that they wanted to share with this man. So they gave this bread to this man. And this man, with the bread, did four things. He took the bread, he blessed the bread, he broke the bread, and he gave the bread. Those four verbs in the present tense. He took the bread, he blessed the bread, he broke the bread, and he gave the bread to these two disciples. 
In that moment, it was as if the scales fell from their eyes. Their blinders were removed. And they recognized that this was not a stranger, but rather, this was their friend. Rather, this was none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In that moment, he disappeared from their presence. And they were filled with joy. So they went from sadness and depression to an overflowing joy. What we would call consolation. You would think after walking seven miles that they would be exhausted. They'd probably want to go to bed and rest. But on the contrary, they were filled with so much joy and energy and motivation that they got up again. And they retraced their steps, returning to the city of Jerusalem. And they encountered the apostles there, and they said, recounted what had happened to them on the road to Emmaus. And they said, were not our hearts burning within us as he walked the path with us? And he explained the word of God to us. Weren't our hearts burning within us, the burning fire of the Holy Spirit? My friends, I think there are very clear applications of this wonderful biblical passage that you can find in your New Testament only in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 24. And I'd like to give you five points, short ideas that you can meditate upon, so that in our moments of sadness, moments of desolation, moments of confusion, the light of God's grace can lift us on high and pull us out of the doldrums, the pit of depression, that so many, so many of us experience. First conclusion is that when they were walking first, they were walking without Jesus Christ. If we walk without Jesus Christ, we are going to experience depression. True joy and happiness comes in contact with Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Number two, they were walking away from the church. There are many Catholics today that are disgruntled for many reasons. And sometimes they hear this said among some of the faithful. I love Jesus Christ. But I don't like the church. You can't do that. Why? Because Jesus, when he ascended to heaven, said, I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. Where is he? He's in his mystical body, which is the church. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. The last words in Matthew chapter 28. I will be with you always, even until the end of time. He's with us in the church. Third point for your meditation. True joy and true happiness comes when... We walk with Jesus Christ. We talk to Jesus Christ. What is talking to Jesus Christ? That's called prayer. Prayer gives us joy because prayer communicates the Holy Spirit. 
So if we, we want to overcome our depression and sadness, we have to learn to walk with Jesus Christ. To talk to Jesus Christ. He is our best friend. He is a friend that will never fail us. He is a friend that's always available. You call someone on the phone, it's busy. Every time you dial J-E-S-U-S, he picks up the phone and he's going to talk to you and listen to you. That phone number, J-E-S-U-S, is never busy. It's always open. We have to learn how to dial J-E-S-U-S. And he will pick up that phone and say, My friend, why have you not called me in such a long time? I've been waiting for this phone call. Finally, you dialed the right number. And then, not only do we have to learn how to talk to Jesus Christ, we have to learn to listen to him. As we read in the Old Testament, Speak, O Lord, for your servant is listening. As we pray in the Psalms, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in Meribah and Massa. And the fourth point I'd like to make is this. We want to experience joy. Then we have to sit down at table with Jesus Christ. For he took bread. He blessed the bread. He broke the bread. And then he gave the bread to the disciples. This Luke chapter 24 is an obvious reference to the holy sacrifice of the Mass. If we indeed want to experience the joy of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Not only do we have to walk with him and to talk to him and to listen to him and to accompany him and to befriend him, but also we have to open up the doors of our hearts and welcome him in. And that is exactly what Holy Mass and Holy Communion is all about. Jesus, we read in Revelation chapter 3, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Whoever opens up the door to me, I will come in, I will sit down, and I will dine with him, and he will dine with me. And we will experience great joy. So my friends, last but not least, if we really want to overcome our sadness, then we have to learn how to share our joy with others. What we have received freely, we are called to give freely. So in conclusion, as St. Thomas Aquinas said, all of us are called to experience joy and happiness in our life. Many people experience sadness and depression because they're looking for joy in the wrong place. We can only experience joy in encountering Christ walking with Christ, talking with Christ, listening to Christ, receiving Christ in the depths of our heart, and then sharing Christ with others. Rejoice in the Lord. I say it again. Rejoice in the Lord. Amen.